launch pad here of the Conservative Party campaign in Harrow East constituency in London. The MP from here has been Bob Blackman. He's been MP for a while. Just how is he now conducting his campaign? Let's step in, take a look and have a chat. Mr. Blackman, it's the eternal question with constituencies, isn't it? Is it local factors at play or the national trend? Well, it's a mix mixture of both, isn't it? Because the reality is that a large number of people vote on who they want to be prime minister, who they want to be uh, representing nationally. But very importantly, in an election, there's 650 individual elections taking place where people will choose their member of parliament. Uh, I've, I've been the member of parliament for 14 years here. I've got a good track record of success and standing up for the local people. And I hope that come July the 4th, they will recognise that and seek to re-elect me as their member of parliament. How do you go about campaigning? What, for instance, is happening in this room? Well, we are preparing uh, letters to go to, to people that sets out the scene, basically setting out my record of, of individual success for on behalf of people and, and saying to people, that is what's at stake here. I've represented people to the best of my ability for 14 years. And the alternative, whoever they, they vote for as an alternative, is someone that is untried, untested, and never been able to deliver anything for anyone. So they're putting that at risk. So if they want me to continue to represent them, they've got to vote for me. How do you reach out to the voters here? How many do you reach out to? Well, there are obviously a large number of voters. We've, we've got a, a register of some 77,000 electors. Um, we reckon normally in a general election about 70% of people vote. Campaigning is typically a quiet affair along quiet streets, but with a good deal of strategizing along the way. Uh, and I just want to let you all know that obviously there are issues on this road, yeah. especially to do with the uh, footways, right. and we are dealing with it. It is with the officers, and we know, you all know that in uh, the council now, we go by the priority list and according to the inspection. So we will let the residents know when it will be done, but it's definitely not going to be done in the immediate, uh, you know, uh, immediately. But you can say that you are on the list and it will get done. Um, it's, what is key here, of course, is we have a very large multicultural, multi-religious constituency with a very large number of, of British Hindus um, and then other religions as well. Um, obviously, I am the foremost, foremost speaker on behalf of British Indians in the UK Parliament. Um, that's a big demographic in this constituency. And so my appeal to them directly is to say, uh, at a time when British Indians need someone as a spokesman on their behalf, it's vitally important they continue to support me, as they have done over the last 14 years. You have, of course, been uh, speaking very actively mm. and very passionately about uh, Kashmiri Hindus. Mm. Uh, is that a reason also that some people will, for that reason, not vote for you? Well, that's always possible. I mean, the reality is that I've been a champion of the Kashmiri Pandits and the Dogra community uh, since back, back in 1992, when, of course, we had the exodus from the valley. I've always been one of those, been outspoken on their behalf. Uh, I've had, I'm the last serving MP to actually visit Srinagar in, uh, and see it firsthand, the beauty of the valley and the opportunities there that there are. So it is important for me that actually the community live together in Jammu and Kashmir and allow the Kashmir pandits to go back, and if they want to, uh, to restore their capability in that area. Now, for some people, that may be something they don't like. Frankly, I'm the sort of person that says, this is what I stand for, this is what I believe. If you like it, please vote for me. If you don't like, like what I have to say, you have to, we have to sort of agree to differ. Through the course of this campaign, how many voters will you actually meet? As many as possible. Um, you know, we'll be out, Put a number to it. Well, uh, it's, we'll be out um, morning, noon and night, talking to as many people as we possibly can. The key here is obviously the more people you speak to, the more chance you've got of success. Well, that's the name on the ballot paper. That's what? the name of the ballot paper. My name. Yeah. Or oh, I should put, I should put none of the above. <laughs> well, that's well, that's, that's equally a vote for Labour. Well, yes. That's I, the problem. I know. That's the issue. And I'm sure you don't want that if you're, you know, <laughs> well, looking to. Well, I mean, we've only got to look back to Tony Blair and what he that's did. That's right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but, you you know, know, there you go. He that's should have been tried for war crimes. Well. Exactly. <laughs> so, so on the 5th of July, if you've done the wrong thing, you wake up and go, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Yeah. 
and you regret it at leisure. Yeah, but I'm... Through the course of these many years mm-hmm. as MP, how many of your constituents have you met? Well, I, mean, I have dealt with 80,000 individual constituency complaints. Now, that's not necessarily meeting every single one, but that's in writing and taking up their issues. I've taken 7,000 constituents into a tour of Parliament. So you know, 10% almost of, the, of my electorate have come in for a tour of Parliament to see the premises and so on. Equally, we are out every Saturday, every Sunday anyway, knocking on doors, talking to people. And so literally, literally thousands of people I will have met at one time or another. And I think the most important thing about that is, is, is that we take up their issues of concern, we answer them as best we can, can't, can't help everyone, but we aim to say, we'll get you an answer to whatever your concerns are. That builds up to a fact of, I hope, already, before we start the the election process, really, everyone knows who I am and the fact that I represent them. Not everyone likes the fact of what I say. That's fine. That's democracy.